Hello everybody, I'm Nick and welcome to another episode of Code Cop, the series where we go over questionable advice given on social media, usually on LinkedIn because LinkedIn is the worst possible place you can ever get coding advice. In this video, I have a piece of advice that is really, really questionable. And the advice is do not ever use singletons, use something else instead. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you what this advice really says in detail, show you the code example, and then also go into what is a singleton, why it is actually useful or can be useful, and how we can actually adapt it a bit in C Sharp as well. Because in the past few years, we actually use singletons in a different way in C Sharp and .NET. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. Okay, so let's start with the advice itself. And I've, again, removed all the names from this advice. It doesn't really matter who said it. What matters is it is there and it's also heavily upvoted as well because the LinkedIn algorithm would promote anything. So the post says Singleton is a famous design pattern, but in reality, it is a terrible anti-pattern. Now, I very much disagree with how this is delivered because yes, Singleton can have some criticism, but just blatantly saying it is a terrible anti-pattern means just don't use it on any scenario ever, which is just wrong. This is not the case. This person is just factually incorrect in what they're saying, and it sort of invalidates the whole post. But let's go ahead and see what they're trying to say. It holds a static instance inside. Yeah, we refer to it when we need. Now, just in case you don't know what a singleton is, it's basically a class that can only be instantiated once for the lifetime of the application. So imagine you have I don't know, a game manager that manages your game so you can run multiple games, but that manager god class can control all the games and see all the players and all the players that queue for the games and so on. Well, that manager itself will only be instantiated once because there can only be one manager to manage all the games. So that's the idea. And we physically prevent it in some way that I'm going to show you in the code example. It has a private constructor too to make sure no initialization or instantiation, sorry, will happen by any client, only internally it can be instantiated. And that's how it's actually preventing you from instantiating it multiple times. But what is the difference between static utility classes and singleton? And as you can understand, a static utility class is a class that only has utility methods, sort of like generate a base64 string or do this or do that, but they don't need to take into account any state, any instance, of their own. They don't need to be instantiated. In fact, they can't be instantiated because they are static classes. They just have methods that can do stuff with or on the input you're providing. Now, the user says, well, the only difference is that Singleton can set the instance of it, but utility classes can't. No, Singleton can be instantiated. Utility classes can't be instantiated and Singleton can hold state in an instanced way, while utility classes, yeah, they can have static fields that in a way hold state that's only instantiated once, but those are static, they're not instanced. They're very, very different things. And then proceeds to say, because we never instantiate utility classes, yeah, that's because you can't, physically, you can't. And then do not use singleton. This continues, of course, to the next bit, which is why technically singleton is a global variable, but in OOP, we do not have global scope. Now, I don't really understand it because a singleton is just a class that can only be instantiated once. It's not really a variable on its own. In fact, you can't even reset its own state. By that, I mean you cannot assign it to another value. So it's not really a variable. It is just a class that's only been instantiated once. And I also don't like when people use the in OOP argument in C Sharp because as you can see in the past four or five versions, all the features were being added are functional features, not object-oriented features. It's a general purpose programming language. Yes, it has its roots in OOP, but it's not really used just for that. And even then, not having a global scope, I don't really understand it. Your applications are built on singletons, from things like the DI container, the hosting, like Kestrel and so on. Like, some things need to only exist only once and should be prevented from being instantiated more than once. So what's the alternative? How will we get the logged in user database connections and so on to pass it around? Encapsulate. So this sort of alludes towards the encapsulation aspect of object-oriented programming. But then it says, for the classes that need something complete their job, I mean to complete their job anyway, just provided via the constructor. Well, that's not encapsulation. That is 
the IOC, that's invasion of control. That is dependency invasion of control, injecting dependencies of a class through the constructor. And actually, that is one of the biggest criticisms of singletons because dependency injection and testability is not really possible, at least not traditionally, on traditional singletons. You will say there are a lot of things to encapsulate and classes will get bigger and bigger. Yeah, that's true. But in that case, consider keeping the classes small by refactoring and so on. In my opinion, singletons are just a global variable that we used to have it globally. It is a procedural feature. What do you think about singleton? No. Singletons don't have to be globally exposed. They can be private classes on other members that are only used by the class that is being referred to it. So they don't have to be a global variable the way it's presented here. I think the user is mistaken. And then the example of the singleton they're providing is this, which is a pretty old school way uh, of creating a singleton in C Sharp. And it's not really a thread safe either. Now we won't go into thread safety about singletons in this video, but I will go here and show you how you would make a very basic singleton in C Sharp nowadays. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Dome Crane called Getting Started with Microservice Architecture. And that course is authored by AWS Solution Architect, James Istam. It will teach you everything you need to know to get started with microservices the right way by someone who works for freaking AWS. Like, that's all they do. They know a thing or two to say the least. And I'm so happy to have him author this course on Dome Train because it is just fantastic and it's going to set the right foundation for all of you. So to celebrate the launch of that course, check the link in the description and use code MICRO20 to claim a 20% discount. This is only valid for the first 500 of you. And those 500 of you will also get a special 40% discount later when the deep dive is out. This is a really unique opportunity. So please don't miss it. Now back to the video. So we're going to go ahead and create just a singleton class, I'm going to call it singleton. Uh, it can be sealed. They tend to be sealed as well singletons because it's very rare you're going to extend a singleton. So you can do that. And then the most important aspect of the singleton is preventing instantiation through its constructor. So you're going to make a private constructor that is empty. It doesn't really have anything in it. And then I'm going to make a property, but this will be a static property of type singleton. I'm going to call that instance and it's only going to have a getter, not a setter, and we're going to set its default value to a new instance of the singleton. And then this will hold, this will keep that single instance of the singleton, and that's the only way we can access it. So even if this uh, class has, let's say, a property called GUID ID in here, and we set its default value to a new GUID, and we remove the setter as well, so it's an init only property, well, if we have that and we go to the program.cs and we say singleton dot, then the only thing we can access on the top level is the instance of the singleton, then we can, and then we can get the ID. And we can't say new singleton because, well, this is not allowed. You cannot access the private constructor here. So if I said console.write line and then I wrote singleton.instance.id and I did that, twice that as you're going to see in the console we're going to get the exact same good twice because this is a singleton it's the same instance in both cases if i get the hash code of the instance as you're going to see the value will be the same it's the same class exactly now in dotnet in the past few years especially since dotnet core made the dependency injection container a stable of how we write applications you might have seen the following you can have a builder and we can have like a host dot create application builder and then we can have a, an app which is builder dot build and then app dot run so what you can have is builder dot services and then add singleton to add the singleton in the di container now this will add a singleton in the di container but it doesn't have to be a physically prevented singleton. So singletons, let's say I have a public class, some class over here, and I have the exact same public ID in here. Well, I can take this some class and I can say, add the some class as a singleton. Now, as long as I resolve this class from the DI container, it will only be instantiated once, but it's not physically prevented from being instantiated as many times as I want. So this is a different type of singleton controlled by the DI container. And by the way, if you have an old school singleton, you can still register it in the DI container by doing something like this. You can say add singleton and then say singleton.instance and then that single instance will be passed in the DI container and then you could inject it 
and reuse it in your application if you want you have this option now why do i say that this advice is pretty whack well if we go to this game manager over here this class that all it really does is it keeps a list of games active games you can create a new game in some gaming platform you can get the game by id you can delete the game and imagine that this can control more things about the games so you can have a bunch of players on each game and then you can queue players for a game you can award a player you can keep a leaderboard you can do so many things well in the way that this game manager is written right now i can go to the program.cs and i can create as many game managers as possible so i can say here's game manager one and then maybe here's game manager two okay if i run this in my application well I can have many managers managing many games, making it a mess to control. But if I physically prevented this from being instantiated by having a private constructor and then having a public static game manager called instance and instantiated only once, then guess what? I can guarantee in my application that this cannot happen. And if you want to get the game manager, well, you can but it's going to be that single instance holding all the games, which is very, very powerful because not only, again, if you don't need to instantiate something twice, you save memory, but also we guarantee that that controller class can be used by anyone in the application and they will always get the exact same state. And you can hold some state there knowing that it cannot be duplicated in any way. Now, utility classes are fine. And if this was a utility class, all the game data would be passed through the constructor. So I wouldn't say get game by ID and just pass the ID. I would have to pass a list of games, but those games will need to be stored somewhere. So at some point, somewhere, this state has to be stored once. At the end of the day, the application itself will need to keep a single instance of something in memory. Imagine if your cache, for example, your in-memory cache wasn't a singleton, which by the way, it is. But if it wasn't, you're going to have many caches. Which one do you pick? How do you invalidate? Now, there is a very valid criticism with singletons. And that is, well, if I go ahead and I have something like this in my application, how do I inject services? How do I test it? How do I... And that is true. In the way we write modern C Sharp, traditional singletons are pretty hard to intermingle if they have to get things injected into them with other parts of our application because we just inject things just so, so much. Now, technically, there are ways to get around this, but they always feel hacky. However, I have a strong feeling that with .NET 8 interceptors, you could actually make a singleton testable by intercepting the calls of the dependencies and overriding them, even if you're injecting them as a static version or an instance version in here to be whatever you want to be by again intercepting that original call but not every singleton needs to have things injected into them and arguably we are going a bit too far with dependency injection in dotnet anyway and if you want to hear more about that please let me know in the comments down below and i can make a video on it so i do think the singleton pattern has a place and even though the most common way to use this in dotnet is through a di container well, it's the same logic of having a single instance of a class in application and by far the biggest criticism is the testability and also because of its nature of being able to access all the things in the application without any hierarchy or can be accessed as well it can also lead to some spaghetti code but just saying you should not use it ever is a bad argument in my opinion but i want to know from you now what do you think about singleton pattern both this the third safe version the di container leave a comment down below let me know and if you have a use case i would like to know as well well that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching and as always keep coding